the artist simply gathers pieces and directs them on a course and lets the lets the material or the subject remain itself and it's somehow enhanced the artist the artist in effect is the catalyst rather than the almighty and in the end if you have been honest with yourself and with the materials that you're dealing with, um, their own integrity will show through. What the photographs really are is they capture a small, a small isolated corner of, of the wilderness that, uh, that is there all the time and is always filled with integrity. Whereas people, people strive for integrity and wilderness always has it. My latest series was primarily shot in the American Southwest. I spent three months traveling by motorcycle, camping out, basically isolating myself and cutting out all the static so that all that remained was the wilderness. I usually don't pull up the, pull up the camera for at least a week after I've been out on one of these sojourns. And, and it's usually on a hunch. I see something specific texturally or structurally in the image that looks appealing to me. Either I've thought about it before, it just strikes me as being unique. And uh, very often the lighting isn't correct, so I set up the camera, focus it on the, on the subject, frame it the way I think it would look good when the lighting is correct. Very often I'll stroll away and come back later if the lighting is, if I think the lighting's going to be correct within a reasonable amount of time, like within six hours. And it certainly isn't, uh, rare that, uh, that I come back two or three days later or just camp out nearby and go do some, uh, some other exploring for other photographs before I come back and finally take the final photograph when I think it's correct. Composition is the most critical thing. Um, secondary, I would have to say the, that the light is the, is the second most important aspect of it. Just by definition, photography is about light, is a record of light. And uh, in, the, in the American Southwest, as a photographer, it becomes over, overwhelming, and very surprising at first how much light there really is. In, in the American Southwest, in Arizona and Utah, where I spent most of the three months, um, they have expanses of wilderness that uh, that we can't even imagine being being from the midwest the terrain is actually undeveloped there are dirt jeep trails um, about one every 50 miles in some of the more remote areas and you come up on a bluff and you look out across this vast expanse the sun goes down and you don't see anything not a headlight not a not a campfire not a yard light nothing um, the sense of isolation was overwhelming, and uh, I found that very pleasing. Well, you're not really entirely alone after, after a while, um, and now it doesn't take me very long at all. I go out and I feel quite comfortable, and uh, I don't feel that I'm alone. There's coyotes around, and, and there's spiders crawling on my fly sheet on my tent. I built my camera with the help of a friend in his machine shop. It is made out of aircraft aluminum and is designed to be as light and compact as possible. That way I would be able to take it along in my backpack no matter where I went. It weighs less than one quarter of my old view camera, or just under two pounds, and is possible to carry it in a large pocket. I used my knowledge of building aircraft and even salvaged scrap aluminum from the planes I've built for the camera. My airplane is my sacred cow. It's a modified version of a popular home-built hang glider. I built it in a tent of isolation in a small town 40 miles northwest of Milwaukee named St. Lawrence. It was very important to me to, to build the plane 
with nothing else imposing on my mind other than my own thoughts. And I could uh, do as, as, as quality a job as I, as I was capable of doing. There wasn't a telephone or mail delivery or any friends for many miles. So all I did for seven months was eat, sleep, and work on the airplane. It was wonderful. The machine became what I intended, a work of art, and it has actually been displayed in an art gallery. Not only is the plane nice to look at, but it flies very well. I had a flight this past summer that lasted over four hours, two and a half hours with the engine turned off, thermaling around at cloud base at about 4,000 feet. I've already flown it up to about 8,000 feet, about a mile and one half. You can't imagine how dreamlike the world looks at that altitude when you're in a 92 pound aircraft sitting out in the wind. It's better than any dream I've ever had, but much colder. And to think that every rivet, every dab of glue, and every bolt assembled with these hands is what keeps me aloft in a world man doesn't belong in. If you could experience it, you'd see why my airplane is my sacred cow. But you can't because it only holds one person. I do admit to living a rather isolated life, but it is not without human contact. I shape my life with family and friends, especially my companion Michelle Bertrand. She is also an artist, which may be why she and I have somewhat similar viewpoints and relate so well. We both just have our own, our own interests and that's so important to, to remain separate and somehow manage to, to come together and talk about those things. That's, that's what glues it together, I guess. His ability to focus on one thing is something that I envy very much. So I, I find myself trying to understand how he does that because I think it's why he does what he does so well. And his love for quiet is definitely rubbing off because, well, I've always had that as well, but it's at least something that we can do together. <laughs> be quiet together. One of my secrets to living a fulfilling life is to keep my overhead low. I've avoided the 9 to 5 syndrome and I'm quite capable of living on an annual income that probably equals the average person's taxes. I live in a country schoolhouse west of Milwaukee and have developed many small house plans for the future. Their small size and efficient design would be inexpensive to build and maintain. Having spent so many uh, periods camped out in, in, in my tent and uh, doing photography, photography for a long length of time, um, alone with, with only the barest of essentials in my backpack or on, or on the motorcycle, um, I found that I need very, very little and, and a conventional uh, housing that, uh, that 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 most that most Americans live in is uh, way far beyond what uh, what I feel is necessary. The main cord I would I would have to say that 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 ran between photography and aircraft and and for the most part my life as it's been up to this point has been one of uh, uh, challenging my own perspective and uh, enhancing my appreciation of things that are around me. That's the trick, really, is to, is to learn how to appreciate all the time with, with open, aware eyes and, and, and appreciate your life all the way through. Make your work what you love the most. If you're really going to to uh, live live a life that's very fulfilling, you do what you want to do straight away.